Hello, I'm Corey Siegel, and I'm the director of the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Center at the Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. I'm happy to have the opportunity to discuss our manuscript titled The Impact of Concomitant Immunomodulator Treatment on the Efficacy and Safety of Anti-TNF Therapy in Crohn's Disease, a meta-analysis using patient-level data from placebo-controlled trials. I'm very proud to have worked on this with my co-authors from the Bridge Group, a collaborative research group who have now been together for 10 years addressing controversies in inflammatory bowel disease, and other authors who are world experts in IBD clinical trials. We undertook this project because we thought this was a very clinically relevant and yet unanswered question in inflammatory bowel disease. The question is, in patients with Crohn's disease who are failing immune modulators, when you're starting an anti-TNF drug, should you continue the immune modulators combination therapy or leave them on anti-TNF monotherapy? Although this sounds similar to the question that was addressed in the SONIC study, it's actually a bit different. In SONIC, those were all newly diagnosed patients who were naive to immune modulators and anti-TNFs, and they clearly showed that using combination therapy was superior over using either drug on its own. However, our question was in any patient, no matter how long they've had disease, if they're on immune modulators and starting an anti-TNF, should you continue that immune modulator from an efficacy and safety standpoint? To address this, we performed a meta-analysis of all the clinically available randomized control trials that, were, that looked at Crohn's disease and anti-TNF therapy. We identified 11 studies, but we found that when you get the manuscripts, you actually can't tell which of those patients were on anti-TNF monotherapy or combination therapy. Therefore, we chose to uh, approach the three pharmaceutical companies who market these drugs and ask them for the individual patient level data from the trials. They were very gracious in sharing this data as they knew it was going to contribute to learning in our field. And therefore, we were able to get all of these specific data on individual patients, whether they were on combination therapy or monotherapy, and whether they had response and remission and looked at safety outcomes. What we found was that overall, whether you used anti-TNF alone or in combination with immune modulators, whether short-term response or six-month remission rates, it didn't really matter. The efficacy rates were the same and safety was the same, except for one aspect. In patients on infliximab in particular, they had fewer infusion reactions if they were in combination therapy, which pretty much fits with what we see clinically. We explored this a bit further, and there was controversy in our minds whether we should include the ACCENT2 trial, which is a trial that looked at fistulizing Crohn's disease. The reason there was controversy was because it wasn't specifically done to look at luminal active disease, which was our primary endpoint. However, the majority of those patients, in fact, did have active luminal disease, and we had outcomes data on those patients from ACCENT2. When we put that study into our meta-analysis, we found a different pattern. We found that infliximab therapy did do better when it was used in combination with immune modulators as opposed to on its own, which was in contrary or contrary to those on Simsia or Sirolizumab or Adalimumab Humira. Therefore, overall, we found that when you look at these drugs in our primary analysis, it didn't really seem to matter whether you continued them on immune modulators or stopped them and left them on anti-TNF monotherapy. But we definitely got a signal when we did some sub-analyses or specifically sensitivity analyses, adding different studies into the analysis that showed that maybe it does make a difference for infliximab as compared to the other drugs where maybe it makes less of a difference. Overall, we have to think about these results very carefully. We know from Sonic and we know from pharmacokinetic data that using a drug in combination with an immune modulator, we find lower immunogenicity to anti-TNFs and higher efficacy. Therefore, we have to be thoughtful about what these results mean. And remember that this was only over a six month period and was a subgroup analysis as opposed to a primary analysis how the trials were set up. My overall feeling is that when you're failing an immune modulator and starting an anti-TNF, you might want to consider continuing the immune modulator for a period of time to decrease immunogenicity against the anti-TNF, but then we probably do have the ability to take away that immune modulator. It may make more of a difference for infliximab than the other drugs, but we're just not quite certain. When we have patients who are naive to these drugs, as we saw in Sonic, whether it's infliximab or other drugs, right now, my belief and our team's assumption was that using combination therapy is probably the right answer. However, there's still uncertainty of whether you should use combination therapy when you're adding anti-TNFs to immune modulators. 
We believe, again, it might be more important for some drugs than others, specifically more important for infliximab, but we really didn't show that definitively here. What we do know is this controversy is still open, and we love to see a randomized controlled trial looking at this specific question of combination therapy versus monotherapy in patients who have had experience with disease, who are failing an immune modulator, and you're adding an anti-TNF drug. For now, we should individually choose our patients carefully. We should ask our patients what their preferences are for being on combination therapy versus monotherapy. Consider using combination therapy for a period of time. And consider that we might be able to take away the immune modulator drug once we have our patients in remission. Remembering that our number one goal is not only to get our patients into remission, but keep them there over a long period of time. Thank you for your interest, and we look forward to further manuscripts addressing this very important clinical question.